All right, Lifecycle 201, part five, and I want to talk about text field scripting and also floating fields. So I have here on the screen a simple form, first name, middle name, last name, as separate text fields, and then I have a text field called full name here on the right. And of course I have my header and my footer like normal. Okay, so text field scripting. In many forms, you have things like this where you want the form filler to have the versatility to put information that applies to them that may not apply to somebody else. So, for instance, maybe somebody has a first name, but no middle name, or they want to put in a middle initial, or their first, middle, and last name is very long, and you want to be able to leave room for that kind of thing. And that's where you can use scripting to corral all the different outliers of data entry and, and make your form look uh, professional and clean when people are uh, filling it out with with information you don't you can't necessarily predict beforehand so I want to show you this little method of creating a full name field out of these three partial name fields using scripting so we're going to go into the script here for full name we're going to choose calculated read only under the value tab and then we're going to go to the calculate event and we're going to type out here a more elaborate script than we've done before in, in this video series and we're going to use if statements to do it they're going to be nested if statements so I'm going to put that here at the top all right and that's just a comment double slash like that just means comment and JavaScript will ignore that text all right so if txt first one dot raw value does not equal null and txt first one that raw value does not equal nothing, double quotes, then we want to do something. So what we're saying is if txt first one does not equal null and does not equal blank, then we want to do something. We want the script to run in between the two curly braces. First name has to have a value in it. And now I'm going to nest inside this another if statement. If txt last one dot raw value And then finally, make this bigger. And finally, I'm going to nest one more if statement for the middle name. Okay, and hopefully this will be clear why I'm doing this after I've put in the rest of this script. So if they have a first name and a last name and a middle name typed into these three fields, what do we want to happen? Well, we want this, meaning this dot raw value meaning the value of this field, the full name field. We want it to equal all three names concatenated together. So txt first one dot raw value plus that's just the the JavaScript script way of either ad addition if you're using a math equation or formula, or if it's a text field like this is, it's just going to concatenate, meaning take the string and add it together end to end. So we'll put a space, then we'll put the value of txt middle, one, and then we'll put another space. So I'm putting, uh, putting quote marks here with a space in between, only one space in between, and that concatenates a space between the two strings, first and middle, and now we're going to put last on here. Like that. So basically what we're saying is if all these things are, are true, if first name is not null and not empty, if middle name is not null and not empty, and if last name is not null and not empty, then we want the name in full name to be all those fields concatenated together. But what if that's not the case? What if we have a first and a last but no middle? So that's when we want to go here and say else... This dot raw value equals txt first one raw value plus the space and plus txt last one dot raw value, just first and last name in that case. So we have now a complete if then else statement right here. This else goes with this if. But we, now we have it wrapped, we have it nested inside of 
this whole if statement. And so we have another else. We could say else. So this is the instance where we just have first name and no last name. In that case, we don't want it to equal anything. We don't want them to type first name and then tab over to the middle and then all of a sudden that appear in first name or in the full name field. We want to wait until all these fields are filled out for that to come in here. And there's never a case, in other words, where we want just the first name to appear. So in order to make that happen, we would say this dot raw value equals nothing. And then now we're at the top level of our nested if statement. We're at the we're just first name is empty, everything's empty. We want the else in that statement. Back this off else. Also say this dot raw value equals nothing. So what we're we doing here? We're we're saying if first, middle, and last fields are filled in, then make this field the value of the full name. If only first and last is filled in, make it the value of first and last. But if either first or last is not filled in, make it empty. We don't want to see anything then. Okay, so let's watch this work. Before we watch this work though, we need to make sure there's no syntax errors. And so what do I have here? I have a syntax error. I have mm -hmm. I needed another bracket here. So I misplaced that. This else has to be closed off and then the whole if statement needs to be closed off. Like that. All right, now our syntax is correct, and we can save and view the form. All right, first name Ben, last name Dover, and then we get Ben Dover in the full name field. If we go ahead and come back and say something like that, it'll add it in. If we take that away, it'll take it away. If we remove one of the names, it removes the whole name because we said unless first and last name both have data in them, uh, we don't want to see anything. Okay, so that's a simple script that pushes the values of these into this new full name field. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, there are many different instances where you want people to fill out their name in the form, and then you, you would want that name then to be used elsewhere. In other words, you don't want to have to keep typing the name over and over again. And so I'm going to give you two examples of something like this, and I've already got this prepared. So imagine I have something like this, where after they fill out the name, we want that client name to come into some kind of statement. And now I've set this up in a way that I do not recommend, but I'm using this as an example because I see so many people creating forms this way. What they're doing is they're saying, I can't predict how big the name is going to be, so therefore I'm going to leave plenty of space here. And so there's a statement, I, and then I put the client name, uh, do hereby confirm the above information is true under penalty of perjury. Just a common legal statement. And I'm going to put a comma before and after this. And so they do something like this, and then they, they use this field here, full name, as a way to put the name that's entered into the statement. So I, as if the person's making the statement. And they do it like this. They go in here and they say this dot raw value equals txt full name dot raw value. And we'll make that on the layout ready event. So just so we're clear, whenever full name has a valid entry in it, we want to put that in here. Because this is what this form is the, a declaration of this person's um, consent or something like that. All right, so watch how this happens. So now we put Ben, and that comes here. And just for kicks and grins, we could we could also do one more thing. We could make this a hidden field, so we don't even see that now. All 
And there it is. And so they're using the, the client's entry, the form's entry, to create this statement. But what's the problem with this? Well, first of all, it has to assume the name, the longest possible name in order for this to fit. What if we went way past that size? Or what if the first name was bigger? It starts to crowd out and nothing moves. It's, it's not dynamic, in other words. It's, it is dynamic, but it's not dynamic in a intuitive way. The first, middle, and last fields don't grow because we've set this up in a static, in a very staticky-like way. And so how do we get around this problem? Well, Lifecycle has helped us by creating what's called a floating field. So here I have just one text box with the same statement, and then I have this client name value here. And if I highlight that value and I go up to insert floating field, all of a sudden you see this new object appear in the hierarchy, txt1. I'm going to rename it txt client name. And then now, inside these curly braces is txt client name. This is called a floating field. It's designed to do what this set of options fails to do. All right, so let's take a look at it now. We'll use the same code that we used here. Place that in the layout ready event of the floating field called, called txt client. And by the way, the layout ready event is just the event that fires constantly as the form is being used. Every time a change is made, every time something happens to the form and that's finished, a keystroke or whatnot, layout ready fires. And so it's a good place to, to put something where you always want the value to be updated. All right, let's test this out now. So now Ben J. Dover is perfectly spaced into this statement. Let's say uh, we put Benjamin J. Dover and make that longer. It pushes everything out and it wraps the word perjury to the next line. As long as we have our form set up to be flowed and we have this object big enough to handle that or we have it expand to fit, it will keep growing as big as it needs to. So the advantages of this is that it makes your form clean um, more user-friendly, more visibly appealing, and you don't have to worry about some kind of guessing game like you do with this type of application right here. So floating fields are the best way to go. Doing this kind of action really is, a, is introducing static qualities back to your form, and we're trying to get away from that. We're trying to go dynamic with our, our form fields. So in this video, we learned about nestative statements, how to concatenate, and how to use floating fields in the midst of text boxes. And that's going to get us one step further on making a robust, dynamic, very user-friendly form that everybody will think is a very professional application. So continue to like and subscribe and leave your comments. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the comment field or contact me via my blog, truetechtroubleshooting.com. And I'll try my best to get with you. See you next time.